in lecture number what? Eight. Lecture eight. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, I gave you a brief introduction into fields. So we're going to start looking at finite fields. That's going to be the main topic. We'll we'll begin. We'll I, I'm not sure how far we'll get into this. Okay. So the first definition we need is for a group and uh, let me define what a group is a group is a set of elements a set with one uh, one binary operation right <coughs> okay let me say let me be very precise i said g sorry to define write it down later i said g with one binary operation I'll denote it plus, okay? One binary operation plus is a group if a few conditions are satisfied. So what's a binary operation? If you want a technical definition, binary operation is a mapping from what to what? Plus is a mapping from G cross G to G itself. Okay, so what do I mean by G cross G? It's an ordered pair of elements from G. Okay, take two elements as G cross G. Okay, so you need a bunch of conditions. The first condition which will which will mostly be very clear is that plus should be associated. Okay, what do we mean by associative? A plus B plus C should be the same as A plus B plus C. There should be no ambiguity. If you were to add three or more elements, it should be very clear. Anyway you add, you should get the same answer. It's associative. In most cases, this is a little bit difficult to prove, but based on our intuition, it will be very clear. So I will never prove it. Okay, I'll just simply say it's associative and it's obvious okay the other two things will usually need uh, careful proof uh, there exists an element i'll call it zero belonging to g such that such that what a plus zero equals a for all a and g okay so that's the zero element, the identity. Okay, so this is the identity. Okay, so it's associative. This is identity. The zero is called the identity element. And the next condition is what facilitates subtraction. Okay, so far you can think of this plus as the addition defined on this group. Then how do you do subtraction? You define what's called an additive inverse for every a in g that exists. Okay, I'll call it minus a in g such that what a plus, a plus minus a will give you this zero which is the identity okay so remember what is this zero again it was this identity okay so this facilitates subtraction suppose if you want to do subtract b from a then you add minus b to a okay so that's the that's the notion for this inverse okay all these three as i said the second and property two and three are typically proved to show it's a group and the first associativity is Usually, usually be very clear from the definition and our intuitions. Okay. So is it uh, not required to mention zero plus a equals a plus? Right? No, no, no. I think for identity that will come out to be true. Okay. But anyway, so commutativity is not required. Okay, in a group. Okay, but most groups that we will be seeing in this class at least will be commutative. Okay. So what's commutativity? Commutative group. Implies a plus b is the same as b plus a for all a b in g. Okay, there's another word for commutative. It's abelian, named after a very famous mathematician Abel. Okay, so these these are also this this is, this is as I said it's not necess necessary for us, but since most of the groups almost all the groups we'll be seeing in this class will be ab abelian or commutative. Well, when I say group, I'll naturally assume it's commutative. If it's not commutative, I'll explicitly say so. Okay. There's also another. So this notation plus is usually called addition. Okay. So so you can have any other notation in place of in in place of plus, right? I could have any anything else I put want want to do here. And depending on your artistic skills, you can draw any symbol you like there and call that your addition. Okay. Notice that symbol has nothing to do with any of the properties. Okay. What is that plus? It's just a mapping from G cross G to G. That's the only thing. I can call that plus anything else I want. Okay, I've simply called it addition, right? 
this is the additive notion okay in future we'll think of states st sets where there are two different operations addition and multiplication and we will require different <coughs> different slightly different kind of properties co combining the two okay but you should be comfortable with this okay so you can have the same group definition without plus with some other symbol okay maybe dot or maybe times or maybe something else you want okay so one can give a lot of examples i think people here will be mostly familiar with groups and i'm not going to spend too much time giving an example but i just want to point out one operation which is usually done with groups which is one notation with this plus okay for instance if i have some natural number n okay okay so this is something which is uh, important we'll we'll use it also so you should, you should know suppose, suppose i have a natural number n i can take an a belonging to the group and then add a to itself n times okay remember i can do this n times only when n is a natural number okay it doesn't make sense to add it 1.5 times or anything like okay so this will work only when n is a natural number so instead of writing this down painfully a plus a plus a n times i'll have a short hand notation for it i'll simply say some natural number n times a okay okay so remember this makes a lot of sense with the plus so when i write n times a it means i'm adding a to itself n times it's just short annotation okay it's, it's it's useful frequently when we uh, when we write down long long operations okay so when instead of plus you use times or dot okay typically this would become what a dot a dot a dot a and that notation will be a power n okay in the multiplicative notation in the additive notation it is n times a in the multiplicative notation it could become a power n similarly this inverse okay in the multiplicative notation will become a power minus 1 and the identity in the multiplicative notation is typically written as 1 okay you don't think of the multiplicative identity if you if you use the multiplicative notation the identity you would write as 1 as opposed to 0 okay but it's all equivalent it's the same as far as a group is concerned there's no difference it's just change in notation okay so maybe at this point we'll see an example which which uh, which will be particularly useful to us I, i'm not going to give you the standard simple example i'll give you the one example which i think is slightly more interesting okay so i'll use this example zn okay what is zn some of you might be familiar it's, it's the integer 0 1 through n minus 1 okay okay and then i'm going to say addition and multiplication are divided to define modulo n okay i'm defining two binary operations on this set the two binary operations are denoted plus and dot i'll call it addition and multiplication okay both of them are supposed to be done modulo n okay why because i want my binary operations to result in some value in this set i can't jump out of my set so i'm just saying modulo n both of them are valid binary operation okay so i'm going to make one statement first i'm going to say zn is a group with respect to what plus. okay with respect to plus it is a group right it's very clear that it's a group with respect to plus okay so what all should i show <coughs> show it's a group first thing is i should i should show associativity but you know associativity is valid for addition right over the general integers whether you do modulo n or not associativity is valid it's not a big deal i don't have to prove okay i'm not going to prove it here next thing i have to show is what identity, identity. what is the additive identity zero <laughs> zero is the same zero here okay the additive inverse is what yeah for for one it is n minus one for two it is n minus two for n minus two it is what two again you can show all these things if one element is an inverse of the other the inverse of that is the back element itself all these things you can show okay and you can show for instance that additive identity is unique you can't have two different zeros okay <coughs> so all these things you can show okay so it's not a it's not a big deal what about the other operation dot can i say cn is a group with respect to dot Okay. okay so there is some problem there right so maybe i need to look at zn without zero okay this notation is what i've removed the element zero from zn okay so i'll have a notation for this i'll simply denote it zn star okay this is also standard notation if you anytime you have a group additive group you remove that zero element you will get something else okay can i say zn star is a group with respect to dot Okay, it, it appears to be associative. Yeah, it is associative. It appears to have an identity. What is the identity? One is the identity. But what it may not have is the inverse all the time. Okay. So you will need. 
yeah so so you need some further conditions you can't say this very clearly with respect to group okay so it turns out the zn star is a group with respect to dot i can say if and only if n is prime okay okay so i i'm i can prove this very easily but we well, let's see an example okay it's very easy to show the one way okay if n is not prime it's very easy to show g n star will not be a group all you need is one example right you can take say for instance z4 okay if you can take z4 star what is z4 star 1 2 3 okay okay what element do you think won't have an inverse okay so you see what is the one can think of the multiplicative inverse of 1 what will be the multiplicative inverse of 1 1 itself that's identity right for 3 also you'll have a inverse what is the 3 what is the inverse of 3 3 itself right so 3 times 3 will be what do you see this is it going a little bit too fast okay so you look at look at this multiplication if you do 3 dot 3 mod 4 what do you get 1 okay which means the inverse of 3 is 3 itself okay it can happen okay all these things can happen in these small groups that we are looking at the element can have there can be its own inverse okay right it doesn't have to be 1 by whatever okay so 3 3 it's but what about 2 2 doesn't clearly have an inverse one way of quickly checking it is try each of the elements and if none of them is the inverse clearly there's no inverse okay you can also prove this in a general way you can show if n is composite any number that divides n can never have a inverse okay so it's not it's not very difficult to show that also so it's not possible so 2 2 does not have an inverse so this is not a group with respect to dot okay why 2 has no inverse okay as i said this can be generalized if, if you look at z and star Okay, z n star uh, a dividing n will not have an inverse. Okay, any a that divides n will not have an inverse, right? So, so you can you can you can think of it that way. Okay, but now we have to show the other other case. Okay, I'm going to show z p star will be a group. with respect to multiplication okay so i need to show that also if you look at zp star what will it be 1 2 p minus 1 where p is prime suppose i look at this guy okay you can show this will be a group okay so only thing that you have to show which is non trivial is that every element has an inverse right you can prove it in several ways okay i don't know if you've seen proofs of these statements can prove it in several ways you take you take any element a okay look at all these guys a dot 1 a dot 2 a dot 3 so on till a dot p minus 1 can any of them be the same okay yeah why can't you have to argue that none of these guys modulo p will be the same why will they will not be the same suppose you have a dot i being equal to a dot j then what happens A times i minus j has to be zero mod n mod p and p has to divide either a or i minus j right that's the property of prime numbers p prime number divides the product of two numbers then it has to either divide one of them or the other right it cannot separate into two and one dividing this and another dividing the other okay that cannot happen with prime numbers okay okay is that clear so if you look at this guy a dot i is not equal to a dot j mod p okay so you consider these guys no two of them are the same so how many distinct guys you have here p minus 1 distinct numbers one of these things has to be equal to 1 and that one will be the inverse okay so that implies there exists there exists k such that a dot k equals 1 mod p Okay, so that's the proof. So you see, the only property I used for p is what? When p divides the product of two numbers, it'll have to divide any one 
of the two. Okay, so that's the construction that gave me the inverse. Okay, so that shows that Z P star will be a field with respect to uh, will be a group with respect to the multiplication model of P multiplication. Okay, okay, you can see several examples and convince yourself. Okay, so let's see an example and try to compute this inverse. Okay, it's an interesting thing to compute. Let's take, for instance, a slightly non-trivial case. We'll take Z5. Okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, if you take ZP star, oops, you're right. Okay, and I'm going to define addition and multiplication modulo 5, right? What is Z5 star? 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Okay, so I want you to spend a few minutes, not you won't, probably don't need a few minutes, Try to find the inverse of each of these elements. What's one inverse? One. one, two inverse, three. So that should give you three inverse is two, and then four inverse will be four itself. Okay, so that's how you go about computing this. Is that clear? Okay, so another thing I want to illustrate is uh, is what is this power notation? Okay, so basically in the Z5 star, okay, so if I write for instance the powers of two, two would be two. What would be two squared? Four. What is two power three? Three. What's two power four? One. Okay, after this it would repeat. Okay. Right, so this is the notation for powers. Okay, so multiplicative notation is just shorthand for saying I'm multiplying two with itself three times. I simply denote it as two power three. So you notice you can use all your regular knowledge of numbers when you do these things. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, suppose I take three. Three squared is what? What? <coughs> no, it's mod five, man. So it's four. Three power three is two, and then three power four is one. Okay and it would repeat okay you don't have to do 3 power 4 you can simply multiply this 2 with 3 do you see that right you do 3 power 3 already you know it's 2 simply multiply this with this you can do modulo individually also no that's how the modulo operation works suppose i take 4 what is 4 squared 1 okay and it repeats okay so one can intuitively see in any group with a finite number of elements if you keep taking successive powers eventually it has to reach 1 and repeat right so it has to happen right so you can use maybe if you want the fancy pigeonhole principle to prove such things but in a finite number of elements if it, if it doesn't repeat then it'll have infinite it's a very simple contradiction there okay so it has to repeat okay so this is a useful property for elements of a group okay so we will study that very closely okay so let's go back to z5 now and look at it as a group with respect to plus Okay, so as a group with respect to plus, okay, so I'm going to look at just this plus and I want you to do these things once again, okay, what's the inverse, what's minus 1, 4, what's minus 2, 3, what's minus 3, 2, what's minus 4, 1, okay, what is minus 0, 0, it's, okay, so it's all these things you can readily guess and now instead of powers I would have what? I would have sums, right? So I'll have this other notation, okay? So if I take 1 and add it, okay, I can get 1 or 2 times 1, which would be 2, 3 times 1, which would be 3, 4 times 1, which would be 4, and then 5 times 1, which would be 0, okay? So you see that? Okay, and then after this, it would repeat. 6 times 1 would be 1 again, it will repeat, okay? Yeah, I'm not going to really just try very hard to distinguish. It should be clear to you. Okay. Okay. So I know I have to, but it's it's a little bit more painful to keep. I maybe I'll put that dot operator as a slightly bigger dot. No, so it's, it's okay. It should be clear. Okay. So suppose you want to do this with two. Okay. Two times two would be four. Three times two would be one. Am I right? Four times two would be 
3 and 5 times 2 would be 0 okay and then once you get to the identity you keep repeating okay is that clear so you can do this for addition also okay so these are examples okay so that's the that's the notation yes no it's five times one now I'm adding one five times to itself there's no five yeah I mean this this number see this when I use this notation I mean I guess that's the problem see this notation is not is different no I said n n a okay so n a that notation n so this this can be any natural number so if you want you can generalize this and write neat results if you like but it's it's that's the idea okay the next notion that's useful from a field from a group for us is one of order okay suppose I have a group G and the operation dot okay so I'll use the multiplicative notation for its operation okay so I'll say G is finite okay order 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 is valid whether G is finite or not okay so maybe I'll say G is finite later okay so the order of an element is something <coughs> something that's important so suppose I have an element a belonging to G okay so so here's the definition order of a okay maybe i'll write down g here just to illustrate that it is g and then maybe actually i should write the dot also but i guess it's clear order of a is the I'll write down what the definition is smallest n belonging to n such that a power n is 1 G. Okay, I'll say it's G. Okay. So you saw why this has to be valid. Of course, if G is not finite, you could have an infinite number of uh, infinite order for an element. It could could possibly have, but for finite 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 groups, it's very clear why it, this thing has to be finite. Okay. All right. So there's a very interesting result if, if G is finite. Okay, and we will use this quite often if g is finite then order of a divides order of g okay for any a in g okay i'll prove this for an abelian group okay if i have to it's true for any group i never said anything about abelian group it's true for any group it's easiest to prove for an abelian group just because uh, I'm lazy, okay, so I don't know. Or maybe maybe I can prove it for a general group. I don't know. I'll start with the proof. Maybe if I if I see that I'm, I'm showing it for a general case, it'll be nice. Otherwise, I'll just say I'll prove it for the abelian case, okay? Yes, very much. I'm using the multiplicative notation. So that's why I said one belonging to G once again. Okay, the point at which the successive powers of A start repeating, right? I, sh I showed you how if you keep on taking successive powers, eventually you have to repeat. The point where it, the first point where it repeats is the order. Okay, it's, it's reasonably important for us in some cases. Okay, so so for instance, if we go back to the previous example, we go back to the previous example that I had. In Z5 star, what's order of two? Four. Order of three? Four. Order of four? Two. Okay. And you see the previous results. What's the size of Z5 star? What's the size of Z5 star? 4. And you see all of these orders divide 4. So possible orders are only 2 and 4. And all. Okay, so it's not uh, this thing. Even here you can verify that. Okay, Here Z5 has order what? The size 5. Okay, and you see the order of each of these elements will divide 5. Okay, it's very easy to check this. Okay, so I'm, I'm thinking if I should prove this or not. Okay, so let me not prove it. Okay, I'll just take it as a fact. Okay, it's a slightly, it's not very difficult proof. I can easily do it. I can have to use some division arguments and all that. Okay, so I'll, I'll assume that this is true. It's a little bit intuitive to see why it should also be true. And there's lots of interesting results in the, in the meanwhile. For instance, one of the results that you can use is that a power mod g would be equal to 1. Okay, so one of the corollaries, okay, so I'm sorry. One of the corollaries from this, which is very important for us, is that 
a power mod g equals 1. Why is this true? Because, because order divides the group. So if you raise it to the mod g, this I will prove. Okay, this is very easy. <laughs> okay, right? I know order of a and g equals is, is going to divide, sorry, is going to divide the size of g. That implies a power size g is going to be some constant k times order of a and g. Now I can rewrite this as what? a power order of g raised to the power k and this becomes 1. Okay. So that is the way to prove such results. Okay. I mean, so, but, but this is, this is an interesting result. Okay. If you have any group, finite group, size mod g, any element raised to the power g is going to be equal to 1 just by this result. So if you want me to look at this example, if I look at zp star, what are the elements of zp star? 1, 2, 2, p minus 1. So what is the size of zp star? p minus 1. If I take any element a in zp star, what is going to happen? Using this result, a power p minus 1 is going to be equal to 1 mod p. Okay, this is a very famous result. Anyone knows what this result is called? Yeah, Fermat's little theorem or something like that. Okay, you can call it, or I think it's called Fermat's little theorem. But anyway, it doesn't matter what it's called. This is a very famous result in number theory. If you, if you are in the habit of writing competitive exams in mathematics, this is a result that's used all the time to simplify your calculation in the modulo p. Okay, they last for some crazy number raised to the power, usually the year 2007 or 1993 or something, modulo or something. And you use all these results to simplify your calculation. Okay. So, so you see it follows from a very nice result in group theory which is more general. Okay, so remember I want to emphasize once again that this result is true whether or not g is uh, billion or anything. Okay, this result is always true. Order of an element. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all we need from group theory. We'll, we'll jump ahead and define fields. Okay. Okay, so here's the definition. A set F. Okay, I'll denote fields usually with F. Uh, with two operations plus and dot is said to be a field if a bunch of conditions are satisfied. The first condition is F with plus is an abelian group. Okay, second F. Okay, so before I write the second condition, okay, I think I can write the second condition. It's not a big deal. F star, what is F star? F minus, uh, F minus the additive identity. Okay, so suppose 0 is the additive identity. F star with dot is again another abelian group. Okay, so as I said, most groups we see will be a billion, so it's not a big deal. What's F star? F star is F without the additive identity. Okay, so those are conditions that each of these operations have to satisfy independent of the other. Okay, right? F with plus has to be a abelian group. F star with dot has to be an abelian group. So there is nothing that relates the two. Okay, so then you would have distributive relationship. Okay, A dot b plus c should be equal to a dot b plus a dot c for all a, b, c, n, f. Okay. Is that clear? Okay. I think I have covered everything. There might be some interrelating thing that I might have missed. Okay. I think that's, that's, that's about it. Okay. So, I do not think I need anything more. I believe that should be enough. Okay, maybe maybe there is something that's missing here. Okay, all right. So that's the definition of the field. And uh, what is a finite field? If there is a field f, with, if there is a set f which satisfies these conditions, and the size of f is finite, it's going to become a finite field. Okay, so those are the conditions. So this is the distributive law, right? Okay, so it's usual to denote the multiplicative identity as one. Okay, 
okay so 0 and 1 okay so using the distributive property and all these things and the abelian nature and all that you can show some very interesting results okay so for instance you can show you can show so some some things you can show just based on this definition 0 dot with okay so you can also extend the definition of see technically you don't need dot for 0 right but using the distributive property and all that you can show 0 dot with any a will be what will again be the additive identity okay so you you can you can extend those definitions also to dot okay so all these things you can show okay so there'll be inverse and there'll be a lot of interesting interplay between the two things just based on these uh, these properties the point the reason why i'm not going to go in go into detail and prove all of that is most of them are intuitive and obvious to you will be obvious to you okay most of the properties that you expect based on what you know from real numbers and rational numbers will hold in general for fields okay so it's not uh, it's not uh, non trivial it's not very non trivial okay so all these things you can show okay so I, as i said we are interested in finite fields a field f with size of f finite okay first of all are there any that should be the first question right is there any is it possible to have all these conditions satisfied for the field right have operations like this and still have uh, finite still have it be a field and the point i can i can simply justify by showing you this example okay so if you look at this this set 0 1 2 3 4 with addition and multiplication modulo 5 what is this right this you can show will satisfy all these properties right we already checked that this set is an additive group modulo 5 and then without the 0 we already checked it's a multiplicative group and how do we know distribution holds we know distribution holds right it's just integer addition multiplication okay it can what i can prove it but it's going to take too much time and based on your intuition based on your knowledge of addition and multiplication of integers you know distribution holds so this in fact is a field okay so since since we know it's a field we'll call it f5 okay so this 5 will indicate always the size of the field Okay, so F5 is this field. There are very surprising properties you can show. For instance, you can show there is only essentially one field of size 5 and this is the F5. So one, one can say the F5. Okay, so it's not true for groups. There are several groups of a given order, right? But for fields, finite fields, there is essentially only one of a given size. Okay, so that you can that you can show. Okay, but it's not clear if this is going to extend or how, are there any other fields you might ask. Okay, so the first example is f5 this we already saw but this can be generalized now what can i generalize it to fp, FP right anytime i have a prime number of elements plus and dot modulo p just by the previous proof that i gave this is going to be a finite field okay it's going to be a field i can add i can subtract i can multiply i can divide except with zero given a size you are playing whatever if a field of success exists it's unique yes up to isomorphism model. We'll, we'll maybe prove it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so so it's not there's not a lot of variety in finite fields. Okay, so it's just all it's all essentially the same. You don't have to worry too much about structure and all that. So it's enough if we see construction of fields. And once once you know one way of constructing it, you know essentially all the ways of constructing it. So you don't have to worry too much about it. So that's um, I've already said that, but it, it requires proof obviously. Okay, so that's that's the first. Uh, example and it's quite non-trivial and it's very very useful to get comfortable with this FP okay so what in, in coding most mostly in practice what P will we choose okay what field do you think we'll be interested in in error control coding P equals 2 right you only want 0 and 1 it's all binary right so far we have only seen codes over F2 right I've seen vector spaces over the binary field okay so we are only seeing codes over f2 you can define codes over general fields but in general we are always interested in the case p equals 2 okay so f2 is 0 1 is of great interest to us okay addition and multiplication modulo 2 okay it's a very simple field you've you've studied it in in various ways okay all right so so the next thing i'm going to do okay is going to look at some uh, some 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 properties concerning polynomials over fields okay so we'll need that okay so the general general uh, 
thing is what so what where are we going from here okay so can we uh, so 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 the, the final destination would be can we characterize all finite fields or can we find all finite fields okay some strange things are true here you can't have finite fields of any length okay, any size okay they have to be of certain specific sizes okay so all those things will prove yeah, not dif very difficult to prove as well but to go through and fully do the construction you need some notion of polynomials over fields okay so some ideas of what to do with polynomials what is it that you can do with polynomials how to think of polynomials what is multiplication what's division etc okay so those kind of things are useful to have okay so I'm, since we just now saw fp i'm going to talk about polynomials over fp <coughs> just give you some ideas okay so this will not be very rigorous just a uh, I hope most of it is review for you. Polynomials over, let's say, a general field F or a field F. Okay, so as long as you have a field and you have your polynomials with coefficients from the field, most of the things you naturally expect for polynomials with real coefficients will carry over. Okay, so what do I, what do I mean by a polynomial? Okay, in general, a polynomial is denoted A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared plus so on till what some degree right i'll say a n x to the power n okay so this is a polynomial okay this is a classic polynomial and these coefficients if they come from f this is supposed to be a polynomial over f okay so there's a nice notation for this so instead of saying all this i'll say f and then i put square brackets and say x okay that means this is what this is the set of all polynomials over f okay f of x okay right the set is very clear okay so and you have different polynomials of different degrees what's the degree of a polynomial largest non zero term right the, which is the largest the exponent of the largest non zero non zero coefficient so all those things all those things will carry over here as well okay. see there are a couple of things you will be very careful about okay so i think I, I don't want to get into such great detail about polynomials polynomials and evaluations are two different things okay so when you say polynomial it's got a certain x power all these things and you can divide them you can multiply them they'll give you different numbers other thing is where you evaluate them over okay so f of x so always you think of functions as f of x okay so when you say function f of x there is an ambiguity there are you referring to the function evaluated at x or the function itself okay the function itself is some kind of a mapping and all those things i, I ref, uh, assume you're a little bit familiar with that but he's raising a point which is highly technical i don't want to go into it if it's not disturbing you then it's fine okay so polynomial and its evaluation over some x or a value x are can be two different things okay you should always keep that in mind i'll give you an example okay maybe at that point will be more clear okay so these are polynomials so let's let's look at this set very closely okay so i have to define a few operations i can define a few operations over f okay plus over f okay i think most of you know what this is okay i will add two polynomials over f add the corresponding coefficients right when you don't have the coefficient what do you do that is zero okay so when a coefficient is not there you assume it's zero times whatever power and then you add with zero and you get it okay so this is easy okay so this extends from your notion of polynomial addition okay i can also do okay i'm sorry fx i can also define a multiplication over fx okay i will I multiply two polynomials i do the exact same thing right right you multiply term by term collect the common terms do the addition over f okay except that all your additions will now be over f multiplications will be over f for the coefficients okay the placeholder x will follow the same rules as you had before x square times x power 3 will be what x power 5 don't go around reducing it modulo anything okay that doesn't make any sense it's just a placeholder for you in the polynomial okay that's just something we don't we don't want to think of it as anything else okay so only the coefficients have to be reduced modulo p if you are working over fp for instance or according to the field operation okay whatever the field operation is telling you okay so this also extends okay so this extends from a regular polynomial multiplication
Okay, what about groups? Is f of x a group over plus? Yes, yeah. You, what is the zero zero element? Zero. What's the inverse of a polynomial? All the coefficients you make minus. Okay, don't always think in terms of fp. But in general, you make it make all your coefficients minus of what they are, and if you add those two, what will happen? You will get zero. The zero polynomial. Okay, so both of them okay. What about multiplication? Is f of x a group? Okay, so what will be missing? Yeah, inverse will not be there, right? So you can't expect the inverse of a polynomial to exist. Okay? It won't be there. Okay, if for instance x is a polynomial over any f, right? What is its inverse? You can't have another polynomial multiplying x and giving you one. It's not possible, right? So the degree will always be a problem. So dot is not a group. So in fact, f of x technically is what's called a ring. Okay, so it's it's got its own intriguing properties. There are a lot of things about dividing and multiplying in rings which is very very intriguing okay so all that is fine the one property that will be very very crucial for us is division okay dividing so remember dot is not a f, f of x over dot is not a not a group so i can't define inverse for a polynomial but i can still divide two polynomials okay as long as i maintain a quotient and a reminder okay it's the same thing as dividing in numbers right when you divide two integers if they don't divide each other properly you will have both a quotient and a reminder and you have to keep both. I can do the same thing with polynomials. I'm sure you have learnt long division in your at some point in school and I'm sure you've forgotten it because you've never had to use it. Okay, so if you've forgotten it, please go and remind yourself what long division is, the way of writing down the what you divide inside and then you put one after the other, right? You, you remember how to do that. Okay, so long division is very important. So division is an important, important thing. So I want to spend some time doing that okay suppose we are given two polynomials a of x and b of x okay so what do we mean when i say divide a of x by b of x what do we mean by that okay what do we mean by that okay exactly so this the technical way of divide, divide, divide defining division okay so one way you would do it is what put a of x here right and then you put b of x here and then you keep finding things filling it out till you get what till you get something whose degree is less than b of x okay a proper way of clearly writing it down is the following okay so like you said find q of x r of x belonging to f of x such that such that what a of x equals q of x times b of x plus r of x and what should be true now degree of r of x should be strictly less than degree of b of x okay so this is what you were doing when you did this long division okay you were trying to find a q of x and r of x such that you can write a of x in this form this is division okay Yeah, there are some uniqueness properties and all that. I guess that's very clear. Okay, if you follow this long division process, if you have an a of x and b of x with a field, you will get only one answer. You can't get multiple answers, right? So you will stop at one unique uh, way. You can, you can prove all those things. It's not a very difficult thing to do. Okay, so so far you might have been used to dividing over what real numbers, right? So real numbers as coefficients. Now, if you have any other coefficient from some other field, will the same division carry over? I've claimed it does. Okay, but what about long division? Can you do long division with the same thing? What should disturb you? There should be something, but it should work. No, mostly, what do you do? How do you how do you do long division? You took this, take this coefficient, then you put something there so that this times this will be equal to that coefficient, right? So let's try something over say f5. Let's try a long division over f5 and then see how it works out. I'm quickly running out of time. I'll just do this and then we'll pick up from here as we go along. Okay. So let's take let's take f five x. Okay, I'll take a of x to be. Let's take uh, some polynomial man x power three, no x power four plus two x squared plus x plus one. Maybe b of x is x squared plus x plus one. Okay, suppose you have to divide these two over f five. Okay, so maybe I'll put a 2 here just to complicate matters. 2x squared plus x plus 1. Oh, no, mate. This, this makes things very easy. So maybe I should make it 
x square plus x plus 1. Just leave it like this. Okay, f i of x. How will you go about dividing it? Just follow the same method. Okay, you do x power 4 plus 2 x squared plus x plus 1. And then you put x squared plus x plus 1 here. What will be your first term? x squared, right? You have to put x squared. And then you do x power 4 plus x power 3 plus x squared. And then you do what? You add these, subtract these two. Okay, so these two will cancel. You will get, you will get minus x power 3. Okay. Well, be, let's be patient. <laughs> plus x squared plus x plus 1. If you have this minus, you see it's actually what? Minus 1, right? So it's always good to go back and replace it with the field element okay, that you're familiar with. Okay, so you simply write minus 1 as 4. Okay, so now what do you do? You have to find something here, which when divided, it will give you this. So you see, you can actually do it. There's nothing that prevents you from doing this. 4x power 3 plus 4x squared plus 4x. Okay, so you divide these two, what do you get? You subtract these two, what do you get? These two are going to cancel. What will happen to these two things? 2x squared, do you agree? Okay, minus 3 is the same. Plus 2x plus 1. Okay, so and then you again do the same thing. You get a plus 2 here. You get 2x squared plus 2x plus 2. What do you get? You get 4. Okay, so at that point I can stop. Why? I got a number which I got a polynomial here which had degree less than my b of x. So what, what can I write? I can write a of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 2 times b of x plus 4. Okay, and as he pointed out, there are some uniqueness properties about this and you can see the uniqueness is clear. If you go through this process, you will definitely get only one q of x and one r of x. Okay, for the same a of x and b of x, you can't keep getting different things. Okay, so it's not a big deal. So this is how you do division. Okay, and division can be uh, very different. Okay, you can check that this multiplication will also work out. You multiply and reduce everything modulo phi, reduce all the coefficients modulo phi, you will get the same uh, answer as a of x. Okay, so this is long division. Okay, we'll, we'll stop here. I'll pick up from here in the next class and you'll see the way we'll proceed from here is, I think I'll probably remind you of a couple of properties of polynomials and then we'll jump to the construction of a general field. Okay, you'll see it's very easy and simple. It's not very difficult. Okay.